Welcome to all of you from the team, from Colin, Claire, Dave, Joth, Alison, Joy and myself. This week has been really busy as it was the week of our Ministers and Leaders Conference. Normally we would be together at the Double Tree Hotel in Cheltenham with delicious food and excellent company. But sadly, due to the current situation in our world, we were not able to do this. It was still great to join together online from Monday to Wednesday with over a hundred ministers and leaders gathering together to train, reflect and worship. Though it was very different not being able to see each other in person, there is still joy in being together online. On the Monday we were delighted that Ray from Transforming Lives for Good was able to lead us in the emotional roller coaster training. During the sessions, we were put into breakout rooms to discuss how we were feeling during this pandemic. In our small discussion group, someone moved on to the subject of gratitude. And this immediately made me realise that over the last 10 months, I had been feeling so sorry for myself about having to shield in the house and missing my family and church family, that I had not taken time to be grateful for the things that I did have like being safe and well, a job, a husband who has gone out of his way to protect me from the virus and a back garden that is full of birds and backs onto green fields. How often do we focus on what is wrong in our lives and forget to be thankful for what we do have? Thanksgiving is the act of expressing specific gratitude to God for the blessings God has given us whether those things are physical, spiritual or material. And we should make a concerted effort each and every day to appreciate all the blessings God has given us. Psalm 92 reads, It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. Day and night, the verses say, we are to praise and thank God. The book of Hebrews says we are to serve the Lord with thanksgiving. And our lives are to be filled with a spirit of thanksgiving and gratitude towards God for all he has done. But this can be really difficult to do, especially at this current time of a world pandemic. When it comes to having a spirit of thanksgiving, this doesn't always happen. We are sometimes better at grumbling and complaining than we are at giving thanks, despite all the blessings. Sometimes we're anything but thankful. We may be like the nine lepers in Luke 17. There we read of ten lepers who stood at a distance and cried out to Jesus as he was travelling along the border of Samaria and Galilee. They cried out, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And Jesus heard the lepers and said to them promptly, go show yourselves to the priest. And in verses 14 to 16, it says, and as the lepers went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And in verses 17 to 18, Jesus says to this one leper who returned, We're not all ten cleansed, he said. Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this one foreigner? Jesus' emotional response to the ingratitude of the nine lepers gives us a glimpse into the heart of God. Jesus was disappointed that only one person cared enough to express his gratitude. Do we sometimes do the same? We take God's goodness for granted. We receive great blessings, yet often we don't give God our gratitude. But why might this be when we have so much to be grateful for? Sometimes we can be ungrateful because of pride we may be prideful because we think we have earned all the things we have received. And in our pride, we don't always think to thank God. We give ourselves a pat on the back 
and forget that it is God who has blessed us. We can be ungrateful because of who we spend time with. Some of us live among such ungrateful, negative people that we soon turn grumpy and sour ourselves. And the time we spend with negative, ungrateful people will influence us whether we want it to or not. And we can be ungrateful because of our circumstances. It is so hard to rejoice and be thankful when so many people are getting sick and dying from COVID and others are suffering from the financial implications of the lockdowns. There may be many reasons that cause us to be ungrateful. It could be a combination of many things, pride, affluence, habit or circumstances. But whatever the case, we all wish we could learn to be more thankful and to develop a spirit of thanksgiving in our lives. So how might we do this? By remembering how much gratitude pleases God. In 2 Chronicles verse 5, they say, They raised their voices in praise to the Lord and sang, He is good, his love endures forever. Then the temple of the Lord was filled with a cloud and the priests could not perform their service because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the temple of God. God's presence came to the temple in response to the thanksgiving that was coming out of it. God loved to hear the praise from the temple and so he drew near. It appears that thanksgiving and praise are the key to revealing the presence of God. It may be difficult to be thankful at certain times. We need to make a personal decision that we are going to be grateful people even when we do not always feel like it. The Apostle Paul wrote these words from prison. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. See how Paul says rejoice twice. He made a personal choice to be grateful despite his circumstances. He decided that even though he was in prison, it didn't matter. He was going to praise and thank God anyway, and it transformed his perspective. In order to be thankful people, we need to start to give thanks every day. What do you have to be thankful for today? I am thankful for the Tesco delivery driver who brought our shopping to us this afternoon. I'm also thankful for the old storage heaters that keep our house warm on a bitterly cold day. We need to remind ourselves to find something each day that we should be thankful for God. In Daniel 6, we read that Daniel got down on his knees three times every day and prayed and gave thanks to his God. And how many of us do that? I want to challenge you to begin a regular routine of finding something every day to give thanks for, no matter how small your blessing is. You learn to search out the positive in the midst of the negative and give thanks for what you do have. So again, I ask you, what do you have to be thankful for today?